All right, good morning. Saturday was planning to get out to 22 kilometers again today, but the weather is starting to come in reasonably bad today. It's meant to clear up over the next two days. I've got the next two days off work. So I'll try and get the birds out to 22 kilometers for both those days. I knew, um, well, I was planning on taking them out to 10 kilometers and doing the brainwashing from there. But given there's two weeks, I think there's around about two weeks before the next race, and I've got around about five days max of free days with you know, no kids or no work where I can probably take the birds out to 22 kilometers. So I'm gonna try and get them out. It's actually four days now that we're missing out on today. So there's four days, so I'm in another four times out to 22 kilometers, and then we'll be ready for the short races which are coming up on the 21st, I think they are, so not very far away. Uh, I think the birds are ready. We've been loft flying a lot this week. Haven't been videoing it, but um, no falcon attacks for four days. Birds have been flying really, really well. Um, and haven't really filmed too much because I've been pretty busy. I've got a lot of chores around the house to do. So um, I'm sort of prioritizing getting all this work done before the weather gets too bad and why it's not summer. So plan today, utilize this rougher, little bit windier weather and hopefully no falcon attacks. I'm going to aim for one fly at least for an hour to an hour and a half. I'm going to try and keep those birds up because if they can do that easily, then those shorter races, which are 140 kilometers, those birds will be fine for. I'll be happy because the fitness in the birds now is better than it has been. So last year, the birds didn't reach the fitness they are now into two or three races in where we're already two or three weeks out and the birds are already there. And now we've got... I think there's 46 or 47 birds in there. We will have to double check that and count it. Uh, last year, we started the first race with 28 birds. So we're already well above where we are. So I'm, I'm feeling like this year is gonna be better. Um, and also we will go into it in a couple other videos, but I was planning to race all four, uh, all the races in the main sprint. But given the, can't really get too much flexibility from my wife's working roster, she works on the Saturdays today, and I usually watch the kids, so I'll only be able to try and race every second week now, which is a bit of a pain, so that'll give us four days we'll be able to race in that main sprint series before that shut off, but each one of those four days we'll enter in sprint one and sprint two, so it'll be a total of eight races, so a um, bit of a compromise, but you know, family comes first, and it's just too hard to basket pigeons with a two-year-old and my daughter as well, so it's not, yeah, not going to work. So we'll just do our best out of those eight races that we can enter. Um, and then we'll see how we go and start getting ready for the year after. So, because we will be flying the full season next year because on, we're going for the longer races and the basketing is on Thursday nights, not Saturday mornings, which um, just doesn't work for me. So rain's still hanging around. Let's get these birds out for a bit of a fly. I'm gonna keep them up as long as possible. Come on, one more. The last one. All right, so the birds are out. We gave the loft a bit of a quick clean. Um, they seem to be out of sight. It's pretty windy, so I don't know how the audio is. Oh, they're out over the back here. They do get confident as the longer they're out as well. Here they come. Um, so yeah, it is pretty early in the morning, so they're probably a little bit cagey. Still probably prime time for something to have a bit of a crack at them, but you know, we just keep cruising, see how we go. Today, there's a bit of wind around as well, so that is good, the wind and the rain. The wind's gonna add a bit of resistance to their training, so hopefully they uh, can get a bit more fat burned on them. They're not, not, not fat, but definitely wanna get that fitness up on them. They're working pretty well, still going out a bit, come back, hanging around a bit low, you see how they are here. But um, that was pretty close. <laughs> but I'm not too fussed about that, I just want them time on the wing. 
If they're comfortable hanging closer to the ground around the trees, that's fine. If they come, um, no problem at all. It's just getting a bit. Uh, I want to get them on the wing, hopefully for an hour, as much as possible. Uh, I actually enjoy this. I clean the loft first and then let them out because I actually like just sort of sitting here watching them. I don't. Very often do I get to do this. If you watch this channel, you know that uh, the birds don't get loft flying like this very often. So. A lot of challenges but uh hopefully i'm gonna aim for an hour bring them in feed them let them sit in there for till the end of the day if i can get them out again for another hour i'll be really happy i've got a couple of birds uh, i mentioned in other videos um see the mealy up there a little bit lazy uh, that's why i see he'll go back up when he gets his breath that's not too bad um that's why i've shut the front of the loft off because they um they go in there and if they start getting a little bit too clingy to the loft I've got my pole there with a little bit of a bag on there that I sit here just to keep them up and that sort of pushes them out a little bit. Um, I'm happy to do that. I don't like doing it, but I'm happy to do that um, when there isn't falcons around and I want to push them out and hopefully get them, you know, disappearing out of sight a bit more. But now they're moving. This is good to see. Kind of just at the halfway mark now, so I thought I'd just make myself hot drinks. It's pretty warm. It's pretty cool today. Sorry, um, a bit of rain coming down too now. Not too bad. Birds are moving. I just had to put the flag up too because there's a few starting to drag them down. So, um, like I said, not a huge fan of flagging, but it is helpful now when we're trying to get that last little bit of fitness in the birds before we start sending them on those first few short races because you know I've got a lot better numbers than I did last year that was my first year racing we did do a lot of races this year we won't do a lot either um, but hopefully just picking up all these little things seeing what's working and um, slowly improving we definitely got more numbers now which is a good sign I bred the same amount of birds we started with the same amount of birds before I started tossing as last year but um, just change things a little bit and it's definitely working because there's um, almost 20 20 or so more birds than we had this time last year before that first race so i'm pretty happy how that's going here they come at some point i'll probably sit down and try and write down all the things i've done differently this year but it is a bunch of things it's um picking up some tips from frank about the feeding getting them on a lighter feed i i generally overfeed my birds and i don't really notice it until we sort of going into a bit now um, and just changing the tossing a little bit as well and sort of realizing last year we didn't really loft fly a lot because of the falcons and this year I was right onto it so we need to focus on this that's the biggest problem we've got to deal with is being able to loft fly the birds there we go again um, and the fitness too this year like I said before they are so far ahead of where the team was last year and this year we do have better birds than we did last year too we've got a lot of there's a lot of Veenstras in there. Still plenty of Vandenbolt crosses, but next year they'll probably be the only birds left out of this team that will be Vandenbolts. Um, and then, you know, we'll keep moving forward. I think good birds is definitely the key. And the fitness as well. The fitness is, fitness and feeding is two big things that I've been focused on this year, because there is good birds there, but um, they just need that fitness. And the right amount of food ready to go. So I feel like we're in pretty good position this year to really sort of do some damage in those couple of races that, um, that we will get to so I'm feeling a lot more confident and positive than I did last season all right they're starting to get a little bit uh, clingy to the loft now which is pretty get pretty close to that time that we wanted so I'll take the makeshift flag down and I'll take down the trapping box, which is my way of stopping them going in there. Um, and then hopefully if a couple want to come down, that's fine. And um, we'll just see. They're, doing, they're pretty, doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. I do have breeding mix in the trays as well at the moment. 
so fresh water and breeding mix in the trays for them just as a little treat because they're doing really well only a light feed because i'm hoping um, to get them back out later on what i like to do is to shut this up open this one and then if any birds do decide to come down they can come down into here have a drink and uh, just relax until the really good birds it'll stay up as long as they want they can still get a feed as well so when they come down open these doors up so little bits and pieces different than last year um, just making sure that we're really focusing on the birds I've noticed today and yesterday as well that the few that I had that were straggling a bit of a strugglers they were um, it's doing really well actually there's only one I've noticed that's lagging its tail a bit you'll probably see that one there at the back so only one now before we had about 10 it's just that one but it's a bit hard to tell because he's a blue checker to see which one it is so this year like really focusing on every individual bird as best i can um just to make sure that we're just not throwing birds away for no reason because that's not what i want anymore and you can see that one there he's out over the trees by himself that's not a good thing for him because he's looking a little bit tired look at him he's going this way they're going that way not good for him because if the falcon is around he'd be like dinner that slow unfit one it's going to be my morning snack i think so um that's why now that we're getting close a couple probably five minutes away from the hour everything's ready so if that wants to come down he can but um he needs to shape up because we're going to push him a little bit harder this year just to that race season because we need to do some damage All right, we're like one or two minutes away from an hour and the one to come in. This is the better group here, but I think they've had enough too. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good, good job, come on. Still a couple flapping around. Not going to open up those other doors just yet. Come on. Yeah, here they come, that last group. Good to see there's colours here. There's a recessive red, fire grizzle. We've got speedy blue still there as well, and two blacks. I only had one black going into the season of basketing last year, so a few colours still there. Still two flying around, but let's try and get these last few in. Oh. Hey, mom. What are you doing? Come on. Oh, she's such a good little hen, this one. I think there's still two, three flying around. Come on. Then everyone else can have a feed. But there is Whiteface. She's still here and she is, she's in the top group of birds that are flying really well. She's, um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with how she's doing. I'm going to put her on all the training tosses and I may just get her in the first race and see how she goes. I just don't want to throw away a good tie grizzle. I know like we need, do need to test them, but I'd lost all my tie grizzles and every single grizzle I had by this time last year. So to have colored birds still, it's a really good sign. Like I still want a couple of colored birds in my loft because she's a beautiful little hen, this one. My tie grizzles last year were on the bigger side, but since I split the pair up, got these nice little ones and they seem to be little rockets and I feel like that that's the key out here um, and we've got our recessive red as well this one from Frank beautiful nearly fully molted out so it's got a bit of interesting colors in there um, still waiting on those other ones to come in but yeah looking good I'm, I'm happy there's a few colors here too so we've got this one black down there there's another black somewhere too but he must be still up flying but the blacks are not bad. Mealies, I don't really classify them too much as a colour, but birds look pretty good. No panting, nothing. So a bit of cooler weather and um, that fitness on that other side is really good for them. So um, we'll see how we go. Most likely we'll get them out for another fly later on this afternoon, but um, seems they've been flying in the rain a little bit today. I'm not too stressed if I don't. I'm happy for them to have a bit of a break. 
There's Speedy Blue, there he is, look at him. Such a change in colour, all these tire grizzles and blues. But, um, yeah, hopefully you can get to a race. Those other two are just still going. What I want to do, I might just open up one of these, just get all the birds into that section. I just want to see who these last three birds are, because I had the same thing yesterday. Come on. Come on. I just want to see who those birds are. So what we'll do is just shut this down. Um, and we've still got food in here for those other birds that want to come in. So I'm just curious to see if they are the same birds from yesterday. I had six yesterday that stayed out for probably 20 minutes, half an hour long, the other ones. Uh, I know who they are. So I'll see if it is the same. Well, at least three of them might be the same. And it's gonna be pretty busy these next couple of weeks trying to get in those four tosses and loft line those birds during the week as well. I'm gonna try and push them as hard as I can through the week. Then we'll give them a rest probably a couple of days before the racing. Um, I've got to go test the clock, make sure that's all 100% running. I'm still waiting on 50 ETS rings. So I ordered them weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Like I was hoping to have them four weeks ago probably and I still don't have them. So. Um, I think I've got around about 32 ETS rings, so it's a bit of a pain because I would like to go through and put all the ETS rings on at once, but for some reason they're taking such a long time, so I have to chase that up again today. Um, but those 32 that I do have, I should be able to get on enough birds to get them into the first race. Those first couple of races, I need to get all of these birds onto those short ones. So the first main sprint, we can enter 25 birds, um, and sprint two, which is on the same day, we can enter 15 birds. Sprint two is a bit shorter, main sprint's a bit longer. So the main sprint will be the birds that are doing really well, and they will be the older ones as well. And then sprint two, we'll just enter the younger ones in because it's a much shorter race. So um, we should be able to get those 25 birds in and then the other 15 as well, and hopefully. I know it's a lot of birds at once, but um, because we're racing every second weekend, the birds need to get into those, those few races, otherwise it jumps out too far and then we're gonna be way behind. Uh, we had that problem last year too because I got COVID and I had to isolate and I couldn't race um, So we missed a few there as well. So this year we'll just get them all on it We might lose a few but the birds that are going to come back in those first few races We should have them all the way through. That's what I found last year with my birds uh, So fingers crossed it's um Seems to be always a little bit of a rush um, So we are going to sort that out for next season one other thing too, I'm starting to plan ahead for next year. Um, we may have to change clubs so that we can race those longer ones because in my club we only race the shorter ones. And I do want to really test a lot of these birds out into those longer races. So to change clubs, I'm going to have to change clocks because now I run the top pigeon clock, but that clock is not in the club that I want to go to. So I'm going to have to change over to Benzing, which I don't think is a bad thing. They are really good clocks and from recent polls that I've had that most people have those. So um, I'm going to potentially sell off a couple of birds because that was one of you guys. Jason actually said, you know, maybe just sell some birds. I don't really like selling birds. I've never done it before. Um, so I am thinking about selling a couple of the babies that are in here. We might go into them. Um, I might just put them up as fixed price ones just so that, um, you know, you know what it's like. Pigeons are expensive. I think the Benzing, if we want to get a good benzene clock, it's going to be two and a half to three thousand dollars to just to get that with the new pad and the clock and some rings. That's not including the club system, so it's a lot of money. Um, and you know, can't take that out of the normal account because the wife probably won't be happy. So we have to sell some birds, and um, we'll see how that goes because I do want to start building a new loft at some point this year, and I do need to upgrade my computer and the filming camera that we use because. All this stuff at YouTube, making videos, costs a lot of money. Pigeons cost money in general, but then on top of it. So um, that's the main reason for start talking about selling birds. I've been talking about it for a little while, but um, I'm working on the website where we can sell them. They'll be Australia only, and they'll be fixed price birds. I don't really like auctions too much. I, you know, I would rather know the price and then just buy it. So uh, a lot going on this year. I think there's a special ring race too in the Federation that I'll be in. So that'll be another thing we'll be working on this year. Like, it's going to be really busy. Like, so, we're going to do our best to, to try and line everything up and get everything sorted the best we can. 
And now that we are not getting as absolutely hammered by falcons, it's ideal weather to start bringing across some more babies to train. Ideally, I would have liked to have had some babies in here weaning and starting to loft fly now. So I've written those dates down of when things sort of slow down a little bit. Generally, when this weather starts coming in, because the falcons have got so much more to eat. And I do have a whole free section here ready to go. Uh, we can fit around about 15 to 30 birds in here. 30 birds is probably more on the max side. So I generally stick around 20. So I do have eggs over there, which I will show that in the next couple of videos. So we will have some birds coming over here in the next four, five so weeks. Ideally, I would have loved to have them in there now, young birds, because this is what's going to work. So that'll be our first yellow team so to speak i've got all the rings there so that is definitely something i'm going to work on very very soon got a section free and i may look at changing over the other two section to purchase as well because the boxes uh, i don't really like the box sections here for it's not really good the best for racing i just want to race to the perch because we are working on long distance birds you know there's tougher birds and the one loft birds i only want motivation to come home is the perch myself and the food because um, that's all these one loft races anyway. So anything other than those type of motivations, I'm not going to focus on because I want my birds to come home no matter what. They don't need to come home because they need to sit on some eggs um, or whatever or come back to their partner. So lots going on. Like we slowly, slowly going through and you know tidying things up and getting ready for those new ones to come across and start this new system, which will work pretty well because it's already showing signs of being what's going to work in this position where I am so it's going to be a busy year all right those birds are giving me the bit of trouble it is now two hours into the loft flying they are back up again they're over there the three of them one black um, but they keep landing I just caught them on the back side of the roof there so um, one good thing they are flying I know but they're going to miss out on this feed so I'm going to let the other birds have it if they were flying the whole time, but they were sort of just trying to land and I caught them on the back side of my roof there, having a little siesta and playing around the water and having a good old time. So we'll teach them a little bit of a lesson. I've got to be strict on the birds this year. And that's one thing that's really, as well as the other things I talked about before, benefit of the birds is just being strict on them. So um, what we'll do, um, I'm going to shut this video down so I can get it edited. I hope you are enjoying like these sort of Sunday, just general conversations and getting the birds out for a fly. Because soon, the sun, Saturdays are going to be basketing, Sunday's going to be racing. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. Make sure you put some questions down because I will try and answer them. And the main birds are getting that last bit of food. We will loft fly them most likely tonight to see how we go and um, give them a big feed before tossing tomorrow, 22 kilometers. So stay tuned and I'll see you in that video.